Poor communication drives customers nuts. Here are seven simple steps to stop it. The bill from the phone company arrives showing double the typical monthly amount, a past due amount along with the current month's amount. I call customer service and I finally route myself through their menu maze. After getting to the right agent, I explain that I have indeed paid the past due amount of their bill, giving her check date and number. Do you have proof? The agent asks. I do online banking, but I have a bank statement that shows that the bank, the phone company, cashed my check. Then you'll need to fax us a statement from your bank telling us exactly where the bank routed that payment. Then we can trace the payment and apply it to your account. So I do as instructed, wait a few days, and then I call back to check that all's well. It is not. I get a different person this time. No notes in my record. No fax received. I start over with the story, a different person. She says, I don't know why the first person told you to fax it to that office. That's the wrong place. And we're not the right department either. I'm going to transfer you to another agent. She clicks off the line. Third attempt. I tell the story again, this time to a supervisor. She asked me to fax the bank information again to their research department so they can trace the payment. I suggest that the payment may have been misapplied to an old fax account that's been closed three months. The research department finally calls back a few days later to say that indeed is the case. When I ask them how to handle this current invoice that I'm still holding, whether to pay the total amount only, or only the current month's amount, the research department says they don't know. They instruct me to call another number to find out. So I call the original supervisor to inform her that their research department has located the misapplied payment. Relieved, the supervisor gives me another instruction. Well, go ahead and pay the total invoice for the whole thing, the current month and the past due amount, and then we'll issue you a refund for that past due amount. So I pay the total bill, thinking all is well. I'm going to get my refund check. No refund check arrives. I phone the supervisor again. She says, let me call the billing department and get back to you. She calls back with this message. They put a stop payment on your refund check because it wasn't going to reach you before the file suspension date. <laughs> Internal communication, on the, or the lack thereof, at the core of this poor customer service again. This incident cost me almost five hours to wrap up, counting the waiting time on hold while their agents were busy helping other customers. The lessons here, if you don't want to drive your own customers away? Well, one, watch your language. Never use words like proof. This suggests that you distrust your customers. Better phrasing? Something like, would you please email a copy of the receipt? Or can you send a photo of the damaged item so that we can process your claim? Two, avoid telling customers what they must do, have to do, can't do. They don't want to deal with the competition, or they will. Three, approach the situation with a helpful tone. Otherwise, you're going to start off playing defense. Keep accurate notes. Why keep wasting their time and yours? Five, follow through on promised callbacks. Every unreturned callback is another foul against you. Hand off properly to coworkers. Close the loop. Seven, Ask the customer what you can do to correct the situation and then exceed their expectations. What additional tips can you add to the list? Jot those in the comments below.